this might be our last day of off-roading. We are here at Holy Cross. We have the same vehicles today. We have the Humvee. We have Kevin and Brittany's gigantic. I can't even get it in one picture, like frame it so big. Jeep. Ian brought his, he's one of our Lone Star Drift drivers. He brought a, uh, this way, um, Forerunner that he just picked up. And then we have a Land Cruiser up there, part of the four wheel drive Colorado Rescue Club people. BMW really needs to buy the rights to this drink holder, this cup holder. This little tiny like 10 cent cup holder is better than any cup holder BMW has ever made. Holds drinks of various sizes, does not let them fall out. It is fantastic. Good job. I'm gonna be lazy and film her from 10 feet away doing her intro as the intro. Do it, do it. Do it. starts in Afghanistan and it's too far <laughs> and you have to kill somebody probably yeah oh, no. so you gotta defuse the ID and like you know the bombs on the side yeah. of the road. Let's, let's do it yeah. a couple IEDs. this is what we we're afraid of we're no more than 40 yards into the trail and there's multiple Jeeps lined up three motorcycles because it's a Saturday it's gonna be packed Sarah's never seen a traffic jam on a trail before the motorcycle guys are actually turning around and they're just going to come down. And now we're just probably going to be stuck here doing 10 yards every 20 minutes. A couple hundred more yards up the trail. We're in a traffic jam again and everybody got out of their Jeep and is walking around, which is not a great sign. Brittany is spotting a girl Jeep driver up an obstacle that just broke a Jeep that's way up there that's been holding us up for like 30 minutes. And she's right up. Now we have like three or four more Jeeps in our way. Whoop, a little tippy. I don't want a radio. No big deal. So what happens on these trails that are really narrow with one way up and down like this, is you gotta remove the vehicle that's broken. Vehicles be coming up and down and you try not to block it too much. And you try to bring a, you know, pretty prepared vehicle so that you're not gonna be a problem. Like I have been in the past. I mean, kind of. It'll be fine. I'm not worried about this at all. You got that e-torque. What is e-torque? Is this a four-cylinder? Four what? Does it have the uh, giant battery in the back? Oh. Look at that. This is nothing. He just walks through this thing. So is that electric uh, thing on on the trail like this? Yeah, it's on all the time. Yeah. Uh, so his problem now is one tire over here is off the ground at the same time as a front tire. So then the tire with the least amount of traction on each axle spins. And then this tire doesn't spin, which has a lot of traction. And then the front corner over there. So now his, they're trying to get him to use a little bit of moment, momentum to roll through it. We'll see if he's brave enough. No, there he goes. Don't let it slow down. Like keep the momentum going. There he goes, like butter. So easy. A little momentum. So easy. So how much momentum does a Hummer need? Huh? How much momentum should the Hummer need? You need at least 30 mile an hour. I would at least grab second gear. Okay. Here we go. I've never seen a four-cylinder uh, turbo Jeep before like that. Oh yeah, do you have some? Yeah. All right, let's hook that up. This guy is a Rubicon, so he's got lockers front and rear. 
and he's just gonna walk this thing. Oh, now it's my turn. I feel like you're gonna end up over into this big ass boulder if you don't go far left. <laughs> so if you watch closely, watch his front wheels on Aaron's H1, and you can see him like we do weird arm? wobbly things that I don't think they're supposed to be doing, but they're doing. Yeah, they expect you to make it. If you don't, you suck. Look at this. He walks it. He, there was nothing to even like watch. He might roll over on us though. Jeez. How bouncy is it? It's pretty bouncy, but it's not bad. Pretty bouncy? Yeah. This thing looks like it works. It does. What? There you go. Knock him up. This thing's got like. Why great... do they work so well? Dude, they've got. If this thing's got great AC, like. Yeah. I don't know. I just build them from cheap and they just work. Yeah. I think the more models. Build them? You mean you put a $90 lift kit and welded the diff on it? I did. Yeah, when it we are not yet virus. a mile into the trail. If you cooked it, and there is a line of Jeeps that way, broken. No, Somebody's broken up there with a brake line that's broken. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's broken right down there. We haven't even done a real obstacle yet. No. Um, I mean, we kind of expected this coming on a weekend. But it's unfortunate. So they need to like hammer down a brake line and vice grip it or do something do to make their vehicle mobile again. I want to throw at you. You're not being a fun guy right now. <laughs> tempers <laughs> tempers are flaring here. Waiting, waiting. Are <laughs> oh, you trying to get some? That's super clever. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't really aiming for your mouth. <laughs> Is nobody nobody has enough balls to eat those? I mean like did you not no, just see me? That, I don't think that's dull. And uh, yeah, we have now a line of other Jeeps behind us, so there's multiple groups like, trying to come up. Yeah. And our group is now eating mushrooms. We're not, we're not that. Well, we have well that's because you're not bored, brave enough. okay? We have no snacks. We're 0. 0.9 miles into the trail. We needed stonks. Things are going downhill fast. Yeah. We've got to survive, and survival is just eating mushrooms. Downhill. We've been here an hour. As long as the dog is still safe. We have just gone to the sign that says the trail has gone from moderate to difficult and there's a bypass. And this is about the first obstacle. I don't know if I'd really consider this an obstacle for the trail because some of the obstacles up there get better. But it's where it starts getting gnarly. And we have the third breakage here. And each time, I'm sure the person in the car feels very like embarrassed because they're holding up 30 people and everything. But we got to get everything fixed and stuff. So you can get 30 more people up there. So now I can be the next one to break in the stupid Humvee and hold everyone up. And that thing is, yeah, it's too wide to even move. So I'll be blocking the trail 100%. They're throwing mushrooms at you, Brittany. What? There's mushroom what? trunks everywhere as you walk. Yeah, but this is part of like off-roading. You're definitely going to break at some point and you're definitely going to be the person that breaks at some point and just being prepared and like dealing with it and everything is all you can do. As long as you don't rip like a steering knuckle off, which I have before, or things that completely incapacitate a vehicle, everything's pretty simple. But like when you completely incapacitate a vehicle, he helped us last time. It is awful. Yeah, it's pretty bad. And yeah. He stuck on, then you end up stuck on Blanca Peak for like three days. Yeah, it three took days. days to fix, and we were blocking the entire trail for well, days. Actually, it took like 30 minutes to fix. Just yeah. Didn't have any of the parts or tools. For yeah. Days. And the closest parts and tools were like eight hours. Yeah, it, it took so long because we had to drive from Blanca Peak, which is in South Colorado, all the way to North Colorado to go to a Land Cruiser junkyard Toyota place, and then back and forth, and it was really tough. And we probably went through 10 extraction bits or something. It, the whole thing was awful. I don't want to do that again. After a bunch of super sketchy attempts, we're now winching him. It looks like he doesn't have much of a crawl ratio, which makes it really difficult to get up that because he can't control the wheel speed and stuff. And it makes it very violent. So the rest of the trail is only going to get more difficult for a vehicle that can't crawl. So it's a manual transmission and that's the problem. Because you need to have pretty deep gears on a manual transmission to do this kind of stuff. Or you're going to burn up the clutch or beat up the vehicle. Or you can have an automatic transmission with a little bit more sane gearing. Or a crazy transfer case. So this is a Sahara and it's probably stopped gearing. Which I'm not sure in a Sahara. It's probably three something. Or was it? I think he's at four.
Okay. Um, but the Rubicons and stuff. Lock the, they locked the rear and, and re-geared it to Cool. Call ratio is not too bad. Yeah. The first Jeep test, I think test yeah. nine. The Jeep didn't make it up. We're going to see if the Humvee can. The other Jeep didn't make it up. A Jeep, Jeep did not make it up. <laughs> You're not going to have a height problem, you're just going to have a problem getting forward without enough traction. Uh, yeah, it might be. You're on your rear bumper slightly. Tell how close you are because you just drive into them and then back off six inches. And now we're the ones blocking the monster trucks after we've been blocked all morning. It's taken us like three hours to go like almost nothing because people have been blocking us. This thing is rad looking. That reminds me of the old sniper like avalanche rigs forever ago. Reminds me of the old avalanche sniper rigs, if you remember those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's super cool. And that thing is like eight, no, really, really, really tall. That thing is really big. Look at it next to a Jeep. The hood is like two feet higher than a Jeep. Is it hard to see out of or no? No? Very cool. I wonder how much exhaust he has to breathe with the exhaust right under him like that.
you think that was going to make it, Brittany? Oh, come on. Come on. That's the only one I could possibly make, though. It's like a square peg thing. Actually, I probably could have made this one. So Kevin's scared he can't make it up the same line I did, so he's readjusting his line. So the first time you put your tire, he pulled it right up here. This gets the height a little bit better. He's not climbing. He's not a Humvee. Uh, I, I got hung up here last time too. Yeah. Well, You're too long a wheelbase. I can't say my Jeep walks that line. My Jeep has just gone right up all these lines. I, uh, when, last time I was here in the Jeep, we went up, we turned around, we came down and we tried them all. It was a lot of fun. But it's totally different because it's short wheelbase on really big tires. Um, and the longer wheelbase stuff here, if it's a good climb and it's tall and all this stuff, it's easier with these tires, like this wheelbase. But um, once you get a wheelbase where it's breaking over and having a problem, you're kind of screwed with these big Jeeps. All right. But they're way more stable. was gonna make it up no really no nah, I don't know it's you have trouble locking them yeah if it locks it seems to go up everything just fine but it yeah. spins freely a lot that's kind of fun not having lockers on this stuff though it makes it harder yeah what do you guys drive we got two Cherokees oh Cherokees yeah. those are super popular yeah, are they super built up yeah wait is the gray one they're, they're gonna want past us oh Jesus they're like buggy ones. Cherokees yeah on yeah, they can get past me. I already made it up. You guys are the ones down here. Yeah, as soon as you guys feel like an empty spot, just go for it. Don't even wait for us. You can take a different line. You know what I mean? Y'all can do anything you want. Okay. Go for it. I'm already out of your way, so all we have to do is, I guess, those Jeeps. They're not with us, though. All right, it's 25 minutes later, and I've turned the camera back on. Not 25 minutes later. <laughs> And now we're stopping it up for the big rigs. The the big buggy guys. No, there's two buggy like Cherokees back there that are rad looking. They look like monster trucks. More monster truck than uh, Kevin. All right, line number two. Oh, and he slides over. So, the reason why he's having a bit of a tougher time here also is these lines are wet at the bottom because there's water flowing through here. And I think my line was drier. Yeah, my line only had a little bit of water in it. His has a bit more. And that makes it pretty difficult. Plus, he's on a, he's on a harder line. There's no scale to anything here. You can't tell this is a six foot rock here. Well, I guess you can because it's taller than the giant Jeep. Am I safe here or will he run me over? We're about to find out. Oh, the mosquitoes are huge. Every time the camera shakes, it's because I'm swatting mosquitoes away. Up here he comes. No slip, that tire is really dry right there if you look at it. So as soon as that tire wet spot hits in about six inches, he's gonna slide back down. So let's see if that happens. I say he slides, yup, slides. You can watch where the tires are dry or not. 
I'm good at this. I'm good at spotting. Are you trying to turn around or what? No, it's turning down the way. Okay. Okay, it's time for the baller guys to come up. This looks like it's a 40 inch or 42 inch tire. Cherokee. Oh wow, it has no roll cage protection though. But it is serious. The back has been cut off. It has gigantic axles on it. Looks like it has full hydro steering. It's on air shocks, I think. This thing's rad. Built-in hydraulic bump stops and uh, yeah. they'll hold the weight of the axle when you go down so you don't have to have limit straps. Ah, always taking the Humvee line. But he's gonna do it faster, I bet. He's just gonna drive through it. Yup, that thing's a monster. I like the rear winch. Yeah, you can take it off and put it on the front. That thing looks like it'd be really fun in the snow. I'm in the snow, it doesn't have quite enough, like, power. Power for like snow and sand. Yeah. front and rear so both front tires and rear tires spin and work amazing and it makes all this stuff way easier have fun guys if I'm in the way yell at me and I'll move the Humvee okay we're in out of the way on the winch bumper a little tiny bit. Not a lot, but enough to stop him up. And now he's getting his tire super wet in the back. This front tire is gonna dry off a little bit and then it'll start climbing. But right now, I, he's gonna have to push up over the winch bumper. So let's see if that happens. Nope, he's gonna back up. Now remember, every time he- I'm telling you this line. Every time he goes back and forth through the water, he gets the tires wet again, which is a problem. Oh no, I went up this, I went, Passenger side of this big rock. That's a kind of rat. Your rear tires are both right down here. Your rear needs to be over to the driver's yeah. side more. That's what it was. I went up like straight. So much concentration on her face while she does this. And she's like, the boys won't listen to me. I listen. <laughs> I can't see what's underneath the vehicle. You feel invincible in those things. Oh, the giant buggy or this one that just went by? The tube frame one? No, the one in front of it. Oh, okay. There you go. True, I need some footage of you guys heckling. Heckle for me. I mean, he made us get out, so now I'm not as comfy and he still can't do it. Aww. Like, what the hell? I mean, the Humvee made it up here already. Yeah. He's like four lines in and he still can't do it. I'm disappointed. Yeah? I mean, I guess that's not good. You gotta, you gotta help me. You gotta give me You gotta do that. better. I mean, you gotta do better. You yell like, the Humvee did it, Kevin, come on. Why can't your Jeep do it? You're like, I don't want to be a part of that fight. Yeah. I don't want to, you know, if he was just like kind of struggling, I wouldn't feel so bad, but it's clear that he's really having a hard time. Yeah. And if he had built the Jeep up a little better, you know, he would be able to get up this pretty easy. He needs more modifications. Right, yeah. He needs 42s. We're going to hear about 42s in the group chat all the time now. Oh, he's up. Yeah.
say this is halfway? It's about a third of the way up, it's still. Third of the way? He's not, he's not out of the woods, man. No? No. It's a lot more nerve wracking to watch than the Humvee can fly through, you know? Yeah. Well, the Humvee likes slipping through. There you go. Yeah. Nice and easy. There you go. Stay passenger. Here comes the dog. The dog made the obstacle easily. Maybe we there should just go. ride dogs She's up here. Like four inch there legs. Why do you have to have 40 feet? Yeah. Keep walking, Good job, Jelly. Good job, Jelly. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. He's high standard. Maybe 44s? 44s might do it. 44s would definitely do it. Good job, Kevin! Go straight. Straight up a bit. Dude. What was the timestamp on that, True? 42 and a half minutes. 42 minutes? Oh yeah, Ian's next. This will be good. like someone that drifts a car. Good job. Woo. Hello, dog. Is that the fighting dog? Yeah. Well, I won't high-five the she, dog. No, in the she, face. Loves, she loves people. <laughs> if, you don't, if you're a dog, she might not like you. Hey. Oh, it looks happy. All right, we have one more vehicle to get up. I'm chewing on my lunch, which is bad manners. But we're now to the obstacles. So this is a river crossing. This is the main obstacle thingy here. Besides, I think it's Cleveland the Rock. So many cool rigs. This looks like it's a Jeep Cherokee truck or a wagon. I can't tell. Oh, nope, it's a Jeep Cherokee with a door welded shut and turned into a rock buggy. Super cool. Super cool Jeep. Look. Looks like some people are stuck trying to get across. Let's go see what's going on. We're hours from civilization in the middle of nowhere, and it's an off-road person party with dogs and vehicles everywhere, with vehicles stuck in the water. So what makes this difficult is just the fact that it's wet, not the fact that it's like super big rocks or anything. I mean, they're pretty big rocks. From this angle, I can see the problem now. If you look carefully right there, the tire is deep heated from the wheel, and they're very, very stuck. <laughs> so they either have to make the choice of uh, changing the tire and everything right there, or pulling it out and tearing up their wheel a little bit, but it looks like they're changing the tire. So the sign said, one vehicle at a time, but these guys are getting ballsy. Did you, did it, you notice it's a Cherokee party? There are so many Cherokees out here. Yeah, well, because they're five hundred dollars. Yeah, five hundred dollars everywhere. But they look super fun. They do. Like I want one. They break all the Not with giant axles and stuff. No, but none of these have giant axles. Yeah, they do. Yeah, that one does. No, 
there's enough vehicles in this soup. This is Cherokee soup. This, this is definitely Cherokee soup. This. Oh. We're about to have three vehicles stuck here. Yes. <laughs> it's kind of fun to watch though. I'm gonna sit down. Oh, that feels nice. This, this is actually softer than the original Humvee seats. <laughs>
So both him and I walked up this with no lockers. So if you just like drive up, there's so no problem. Yeah. You're yeah. so light that it just doesn't. Yeah. It's lighter than it. Everybody was like, we've been sitting here for 40 minutes and people are having a disaster getting up and Kevin and I just walked up. So I was getting really worried about the Humvee making it because it's obviously not the ideal vehicle for I was really worried about my but fucking it, long ass. I've got like a boat. I've got a huge wheelbase and really tall. I don't know. But it worked. You know why? Why? Milestar Patagonia. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. You don't think it's that they're 40 inches? So as someone that has a not been up to Holy Cross in maybe about the last eight years. I've never seen all these UTVs up here, which is really interesting. Like it's always been a Jeep trail, but it's made it so much more accessible because you used to be able to just buy, well, build an entire Jeep. So it was a big deal to be able to build a Jeep that would make it up here. Now you can just buy a UTV that'll basically make it right out of the box, which is interesting. That is a really cool Jeep. Man. Both of those are super, super cool. Yep. Brittany and Kevin are superstars out here because of YouTube and everybody hugs them and is so nice to them. And it's the exact opposite of like me being around. They're just like, get out of here. <laughs> me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, when I first moved here in like 97, uh -huh. uh, I was driving around with like Texas plates and people would, like spit at me and scream at me and stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, they're like, quit, like get out tourists. Or, you know, they'd say weird stuff. I would much rather have Texas. I guess it's Colorado, so. The Californians, I'll say yeah. that. Yeah, definitely. I guess it's so. I would be like California. open the trails and Californians are like, close <laughs> oh, the trails. Yeah. yeah. I think it, there's just so many transplants here now that like it's yeah. not like you're a transplant. I know. You got you. Louisiana. I'm a transplant too. Yeah. From the West Coast. <laughs> and this once again leads us to our arch nemesis, the first obstacle ever that we could not conquer in our JL and that is Cleveland Rock which we still might not conquer because despite having 40s uh, in a Hemi now it's usually buggy built vehicles that only make it up this thing usually <laughs> uh, and they have a better wheelbase than we have but we're definitely going to give it our best shot and uh, see if we can uh, change history just so we can get and welcome to the end of this trail so the trail gets super hard for the last bit. Up to this, this is Cleveland Rock, and this is really difficult. Last time we were up here, Aaron Smith and I came up here by ourselves on a weekday. Uh, I didn't even think about how hard it was. We just got up here, drove up, went to the very top, and um, went hiking to the top of the highest little mountain we could find. Uh, this is kind of a wheelbase dependent and everything, like probably obstacle. That requires a heck of a Jeep. And it, if I remember correctly, it was pretty terrifying coming down. So once you're up there, you're committed. You've got to come down this thing. And it's about a two story climb, even though you really can't tell from the bottom up to the top. Um, this obstacle isn't too crazy if you can keep your tires dry, but it's kind of impossible to keep your tires dry because this little creek comes through. So you're doing this with wet tires, which makes it so much harder because you can't stick to the rock. You can try and get on the rock and like spin your tires and warm them up. But every time you reposition or do anything, it becomes a disaster. And I don't think there's any hope of getting a Humvee up this. We're not even gonna try. Not even a little bit. Maybe we should try. No, it's a bad idea. The worst part would be coming down for me with no yeah. flex, I would just roll. It would just slide here. That is the big boy line. This doesn't look crazy, but it's a super crazy line. Better spend more money. And when you're like, hey, you should buy this hydro steer. It really works. 
Wait, Kyra does he not have high trust here? I don't. He no, him. Does, but... Uh oh. Better get a 2019. It's too old for this. Yeah. Yeah. What does a Toyota person heckle a Jeep person with? I can't heckle at all when it comes to steering because I don't really have any power steering. Oh. That's pretty much just. You're just like, go work it. out. Yeah. Oh. I told him to disconnect his sway bars. Yeah. Probably used to go to 42s or 45s. 42s would work. Do they sell 45s? I don't know. Probably someone does. I feel like you have to go Miles for 44s. Miles probably make them for him. Oh, man. That's a big commitment, though. You gotta make a mold. Neutral's a good gear. No problem though, I brought the Humvee if he gets stuck. Why don't you start with like something cheaper? Like an XJ? Yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be a trailer queen pretty soon. What? Oh yeah, but I don't want to make him feel bad, so we're just gonna leave it right there. How am I supposed to go over there if I straighten up? At first I thought he was just doing a comedy routine up here, but I didn't realize he was really trying. You know what I mean? I think he's really trying. That actually concerns me because I'm like, uh, we have to get this out of here. And like that thing's kind of big for either of us to turn down. Your not doing anything. That line's not going to work. You're going to need your rear nip on that same rock you started on. I'm just trying to get up so I can get my back end open. This is what I have. It's like you're driving away. Just say it on video. Just say it on video. What do you want from me? With what? With whatever the fuck you got. With the Land Cruiser. With the, with the Humvee. <laughs> okay, I gotta go to work. Sorry, everybody. All right. I just wanted this on video proof. Kevin's kind of <laughs> mad right now, so don't show Kevin. Oh, He's getting God. frustrated. But we just needed video proof. He's going up something I can't, though, so. He's trying to. All I want is like something to do something. So, like, that's not a good spot. He said, hold on. We'll see if our winch I installed works. I wouldn't be surprised if this fails. right now. Did we already pop that fuse? Yeah, you gonna... stop, I'll stop. He can't. Aaron. Yeah, probably. Probably that fuse popped. I mean, let's see if that's what it is real fast. Well, what size fuse is it? Why is it's it popping? 80 amp. Because that's all I had. Jump it. 80 amp's not enough to run that. Yeah, I figured it probably needed like 150, but I didn't have any. I don't know. I don't know if we have anything to jump it. Is Kevin stuck on an obstacle that a brand new Jeep probably shouldn't be on, but he is very brave. Uh, so I give him huge kudos for that. I think Kevin needs to get a buggy so he can go do the hardest stuff. Um, 
but then it's not quite as exciting as like a brand new Jeep doing it all. What do you think, True? It's pretty ballsy. Pretty ballsy? Pretty ballsy. And we were winching and um, <laughs> we blew a fuse, a little fusey boy. Yeah. It had an amp fuse. We didn't have enough time. They were trying to leave on Sunday. So we used an 80 amp fuse on it. Obviously that's not enough. Probably needs a 200 to 250. So yeah. uh, we'll try again on that. What was sweet though is it worked. It did work. It worked for like- It worked. Until it blew up the For fuse. like a solid like one foot of winching. <laughs> we're now on extraction. I don't know, two attempt? And there's a winch cable now up to a tree and Kevin's trying to winch himself straight up. So we're gonna see if he goes all the way up and gets ballsy, or if he just does it enough for us to pull him sideways. But he might just get super ballsy and just keep going. That's what it looks like it's gonna be. Keep it coming in. Keep winching in. Has he thought about he has to come back down? We come down over there. Let's I'm not sure. I guess you can. You're supposed to come down this way. Mosquitoes. Sketchy. This is really sketchy. True. You might want to move even.
50% of every day in Colorado in the mountains, Mark. We get hailed on. Oh, uh, there it is, a little tiny hail. They're itty bitty guys right now. Look at them go. What the hail? Such tiny, little tiny hails. They're probably gonna get real big fast though. Probably close your son up there. Yeah. Brittany, I have a question. Yes. How well did Kevin listen to you on that obstacle? Zero percent well. How does that make you feel? What he told me to do was wrong. <laughs> that makes you feel worse when he says that. Okay, 100%. I mean, the thing is, Cody's like, everything was wrong. As if I've every time I've gotten him up an obstacle, I've failed him, right? Yeah. 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 No. I feel like he doesn't understand you have his best cons like best interest at heart. Absolutely. And the Jeep. And the Jeep. Like, and I'm probably the only predicament. And he had to have Aaron it's, hug him. It's really good that you are supportive of like dragging a brand new Jeep around that could have gone so badly <laughs> no, that you're fine. a supportive we're, we're, we wife. We down in one piece. He's safe and sound. The Jeep's safe and sound. I don't know what's wrong with the this. The dog is safe though. and sound. The dog is jelly belly safe and sound. I'm covered in mosquito bites. I'm a little bit Yep, wrong. they're everywhere. They don't actually affect me somehow. They don't make bite marks, but there he is. Even higher than that would be fine. Kevin's Hemi provides too much torque for the power steering pump. It torqued all the fluid out of it. And now, the power steering oh, fluid and pump and right all that stuff it, yeah. is okay, dead. Right. So every time somebody asks him if it has a Hemi in it, Look it does. Dirty I am. You know, what's funny is this is a 6.4 and my Humvee's a 6.2. Wait, I, I didn't capture this properly. Is it, is it mystery? This is Lucas. Is it Lucas, Lucas power, power steering, steering fluid? fluid. Yeah. Lucas power How thick is it? Fluid. <laughs> is it like honey? No. What does it taste like? Uh, it looks like a... I didn't know that they make like... This is the little tiny town of Holy Cross, which is just underneath the Little Rock, which was up there, which was what we were just doing. And this, uh, we have like walked over there before. It's the little tiny mining town, I believe, what's left of it for what was somehow people got up here and mined things. People used to be such men. We think we're men like coming up here and four wheel drive vehicles with like heat and like in the summer. And those people were real men. Uh oh, now we're back in a traffic jam. There was no vehicles there a minute ago. Now it's on foot. Cute stream, beautiful. Jump, jump, jump. Do you feel like a woodsy outdoorsy man? Next time on Property Brothers. We fix up this $500,000 house. <laughs> yeah. Pretty big budget. The couple's budget is actually $1.2 million. Yeah. She's a butterfly collector and he's a school teacher. Yeah. Part time. Yeah, part time school teacher. Yeah. Look at that, it's split at the top. The patina? Yeah. The ancient patina. That's very. Oh, dogs are crossed up. It almost looks like it got burned. There's a lot of nails in there, probably don't yeah. let the dogs in. It could have gotten burned. It looks a little. Yeah, burned on the outside. But these historic places, they usually like restore these at some point. Yeah. You'll find this house has a very open floor plan. Open Makes you really feel like you're outside. It really is nice. I love this. It's a good fixer upper. They are on a higher lot. You know, if it were me, I'd just buy both houses for two million. And, and just knock down the other one. No, I'd make this my uh, my root cellar, my storage cellar. Hmm. Yeah, I can't, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of people. You're not going to get a lot of guests up here, though. But there are people moving in up there. I don't know if they are or not. That looks like it has been built at some point, but they've stopped. And like, I guess. I do a lot of hunting and I come across that stuff. Aaron's going to attempt a different route down than he did going up. That's true. We are currently back at the water crossing and we had about 45 minute wait here to get across before. Let's see, whoa, I'm, God, I almost fall. Um, see how long it's gonna be now. We got some people coming across. Doesn't look too bad. Looks like it's gonna be another 20 minutes or something. Uh-oh, he has a broken steering thing. Can't 
tell how much stuff is broken. Something's broken. Just cosmetic, just a shock? <laughs> <laughs> a Jeep just passed me with an interesting shock setup. If you look right there, it has adjustable coilovers on it, or no, maybe just, adjust, just adjustable shocks. But the adjustment on the shock is super low and can hit, which is super interesting. All right, time for us to go. This could be the most action-packed moment of the entire trip. Come on, roll it, roll it, roll it. I think all of his corner glass is going out. This is so anticlimactic. This is boring, Ian. Spice it up. It doesn't look like anything. It looks like he's going to get groceries. That forerunner will not quit. It just keeps doing everything and following us and won't go away. We're exiting the trail right now. If you head a little bit further up, um, the road where we came in, blah, 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 we're gonna head left, but if you head to the right, there's a reservoir, and that pipe is, how big is that pipe around? 10 feet around? Probably, if yeah. not more. Not more. It is huge. Beautiful mountain streams everywhere. And then out of hilarity, some dude looks like he broke a knuckle off a Jeep, and there is a trench dug, it's kinda hard to see, all the way back down the mountain. We're just taking a picture. So uh, I did call it right. That's a Dana 35 probably on a Jeep. Oh, maybe not, I don't know. Anyways, the old ones were C-clip axles. I'm not sure if that's the problem or what happened. Looks like he lost a bunch of wheel studs as well. He broke an axle or lost a wheel or did something and then had to come all the way down the mountain like that. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Mark has found his calling as a photographer. Is Mark smiling? Mark's happy. Look at him smile. Alright, I took a bun. Bye girls. Bye. <laughs> Aww. We were just uh Riding scooters everywhere, and True and Three Mark bikes. were jumping oh, them. And maybe, maybe one of you got a video for me. For me. We got slow mo, yeah. No, they stole the awesome. seat. I will cut yeah, that maybe in. Maybe someone so paid for a good seat. So they stole they the got seat, ran over and then they, they bend the front wheel just to, just to like mess with the mess bike up. Uh, I, I have you, no idea. They paid a lot for the handlebars and the seat. They got ran over and they left everything else. All right, so I had a good idea for scooting. <laughs> this works. <laughs> Move your hand. <laughs> Uh, uh, Jelly looks displeased. It's very displeased. That's not gonna be a thing. Oh, She's scoots. Like, what are you doing to me? Womp womp. If you're not from Texas or the United States, this is a thing people do, like taking vehicles down to Mexico. They put little tiny tow bars between them and like tow three cars together with the hazards on, and it is so dangerous looking. They'll do it with like some little tiny crappy car towing a Dodge Caravan, towing something else. And typically they're loaded up with tons of stuff in the bed from like, uh, I don't know where, like bicycles and stuff like that, 10 feet tall. Uh, just some site you see that some people might not see from different parts of the world. We're about to leave Colorado and it is absolutely beautiful sunset. Literally no better place or time to fix crappy trailer wiring on a crappy trailer. How's it going, Mark? With not the right tools. Duct tape tacular? It's uh, it's going. The lights the, work now. This is the kind of mechanic Mark is. No, no, no. This Mark is not says everything can be fixed with duct tape. This is not the kind of mechanic Mark is. Every customer car he's ever worked on gets got duct tape. Some require it. 